everyone, and welcome to today's SQL Office Hours session. Today, we're going to do something a little bit different. So in the past, I've come up and I've talked about SQL, and maybe we've had some questions some discussions about the topic I've discussed. Today, um, I want your help. I want your help um, try and help figure out how to design a database schema. Now, just to be clear, this is just a bit of fun, something I'm um, trying out. It's not a real project, but I think there's a lot of interesting decisions that can be made here and a lot of things that we can talk about. And what I'm going to do is throw up various topics. And for each one, um, we're going to have a vote. OK, you know, how we store our primary keys, that kind of thing. So please vote for your preferred option. Um, put your defend your choices in the question and answer in the comments. Um, and I'll review those, read some of those out and see what the discussion is. And basically for each choice, we'll pick the winner, mo one with option with the most vo votes wins, and then I'll go ahead and actually build the schema. And we will answer some basic questions about it and we'll see how the decisions we made actually affect that. Um, just at this point, if, if at any point it turns there out that there is in fact a tie, so two, um, the same number of people vote for the same choice, I have got a coin here, it's a quarter for some reason. I don't know why I've got some quarters lying around. I live in the UK. Um, I will flip the coin and um, that will be the tiebreaker if for some re any reason we actually need a tiebreaker on any of these decisions. So um, please get involved in this one. So what, what are we trying to do here? Well, I'm sure at this point, many of you have been aware that there are a lot of kind of World Cup events going on around the world, you know, like rugby, football, cricket, there's a whole slew of them going on at the moment. So I thought it might be interesting just to kind of think about how we would design a um, sport, uh, system to record results for an international sporting league. So we've got countries and which games they partake in. And for the purpose of this, just kind of make it doable within an hour or so, um, we're just gonna focus on two key entities. We've got countries and the games they play in. Now, obviously, a country can have many games and each game will have exactly two teams, the home team and the away team. Now, just to clarify here, countries and teams, I'm using synonymous to mean basically the same thing because each country will have at most one team to represent them. So in this instance, at least, countries and teams may, may mean the same thing. Um, so just kind of set the context here. So this is, the, I mean, it's super simple, right? There's only two entities here. It doesn't get more, much more simple than this. Um, but there's still a lot of decisions we need to make when it comes to actually building the schema and actually turning this into a real physical design. So we're going to walk through those. As we do, there are three kind of key business requirements, three SQL queries that we're going to need to write based on the schema that we actually design at the end of this. So just kind of keep these in the back of your mind, if you want, while, while we go in through and make these choices. So first up, you know, everyone, every um, supporter of their home country probably wants to know all the games that their team has played in, either their past games, they want to see the results, and the upcoming games. And we want you'll want to see them probably in um, local time for your country. So for me in the UK, that would be London time. So GMT, or you know, it's not uh, London time. If you live in um, India, it's, you know, Indian standard time. Just to note, there are lots of countries that span multiple time zones, like the USA. We're just going to pick a default time zone for those countries, um, just to keep things simple for the purpose of this, just keep kind of control things. So we want to see all the games for a team and their results and the future ones in and the start time in the local time for that country. Next thing is we just want to see all the fixtures that are going to take place in the next seven days. And we want that to be in a consistent time zone so we'll normalize it to the session time zone right so different people around the world um, can pull out the, fi the fixture list and see what time it will be in their country that these particular games start and finally um, this is going to be like you know everyone plays everyone round robin style tournament we're going to want to have the league so we want to see wins draws losses for each team and assign them some points and so on and so forth so um that is kind of like the high level, you know, don't worry too much about these, but just maybe keep them in mind as we go through this process. So first up, 
we've got to build our country's table. And an interesting question here is, what do we use as the primary key? Um, one, there's a kind of common natural key that we could use, and that's the ISO country codes, two character codes. So GB for the UK, uh, D for Germany, IN for India, US for USA, and so on and so forth. So we could use that, or we could use create a surrogate key. So we've got the choices here. I've got a poll on this, and I've just launched it. So please, at this point, um, pick which you think we should go for here. So like you see on the left, we're going to have sequence assigned primary key. Um, and on the right, we're actually going to use those two character ISO codes as the primary key. So, you know, NL, GB, um, SE, all that kind of lovely nonsense. So go ahead and keep voting. Um, just another minute or two. Um, and like I say, if you, after you have voted, please, you know, um, if you've got any comments about why you've chosen a particular choice, then please put it in the Q&A and we'll see, you know, what swayed people one way or the other. So we've still got, I think, we think we've got most of the votes in, probably still a few people come on. Okay, so um, someone's saying country codes can change. So you're saying that's why, I mean, can country codes change? These are ISO codes, right? I can't think of a time. I mean, countries can become new countries. And they may split up, like, um, is it South Sudan is the most recent country? But that is a new, it's a different country, right? We're not updating an existing country. Can they really change or do they often change? Um, what if India decides to rename? Yeah, but would that change the code? Would it change from IN or would that be a new country? Hmm, interesting. Yeah, so um, surrogate for query performance, integer than varchar. Okay, that's an interesting one. Um, yes, please put everything in the Q and A. Chat is deliberately disabled because I can't, I can't keep track of the chat. Basically, right? Please use Q and A. <laughs> okay, all right. So um, lots of choices here, and I think at this point most people have voted. There's still a few hangers on. I'll give it another second or so. Um, so I will say at this point, I've genuinely no idea what's going to work out here, um, or what's going to be the winner. So we'll see what happens. All right. Not quite everyone. I think pretty much everyone has voted at this point. So let's just end it and I'll share the results of that. So as we can, hopefully you can see, um, the surrogate has narrowly picked it. So 56% of the vote versus 44%. So in this case, what we will be doing, we'll be creating surrogate keys for the countries table. Okay, so I'm, I'm writing this down on a piece of paper so I remember it. If you know you want to keep track as well, then also please write it down um, so we can make sure we're doing what everyone's decided here. Okay, so let's see. I think we've got surrogate query for, query for performance. It's an interesting one. And that's something to think about. Integer makes life easier in Apex. Okay, that's an interesting, you know, you're looking, letting the tool decide how you design your schema. That's an, an interesting thought there. Country codes will never change for old entries, but new countries, co countries can have new codes. Surrogate is unnecessary here, as the column is quite small anyways for performance. And that's a good point there. Um, it's about 50-50, but we consider that country codes do not change. Yes, I think one of the point things here about is these are ISO standard codes. Um, they are heavily embedded in systems throughout the world. The chances of them changing are very, very small. They, or there certainly would be a very huge impact across <laughs> computer systems across the globe. Um, so if they ever did change, you would certainly have a long time to make that an effect. But as, as people say, new country codes may come into effect here. Okay, so we've got surrogate. That's that's the first choice we've gone, gone for. All right, so next up, um, we want to be able to record the status of a game. So there's two kind of obvious statuses. The game could be scheduled um, or it could be completed. Um, it's also worth bearing in mind, um, can, uh, games could get cancelled for various reasons. You know, players aren't available. There's some problem with the home you know, there's weather problems, that kind of thing. Games could get cancelled. So what we want to do is record the game status. But the question here is, how are we restricting? How are we ensuring that people can only enter 
valid game statuses. And there's two basic choices here, and that is we can have a check constraint or a lookup table. So I'll start that poll. Um, so vote away. So like I say, with a check constraint, we'll have our game status column, and we'll just explicitly list out what the values we are, what the allowed values here are here. So here we've got completed, scheduled, and cancelled. With our lookup table, we'll create a second table. We'll call it game statuses or something like that. Um, its primary key will be the status codes, and then we'll have a foreign key from our games table to this table. Um, so that way, we can only actually have values that exist in that lookup table. So. Um, so votes, I see votes coming in. Uh, this one's a bit, bit more one-sided than surrogate versus um, a nat natural. So comments coming in, adding data in a lookup table will not alter the table. Very, very good point there. You know, if we want to change this check constraint, we've got to do DDL, right? That's um, some kind of database release. Whereas with a lookup table, with DML, we can build a, build a, um, some kind of maintenance screen and let the end users, the customers, actually manage that. Okay, lookup table can have translations and descriptions of the status. Oh, that's a very good point. Um, yeah, we can add more information about what these statuses mean, right, in our lookup table. And, and there we go, see a couple of other things. Check constraint requires DDL for adding, yeah, we just made point about uh, DDL versus DB, DML. Lookup table is much easier to handle. So I I think we've got most of the people have answered at this point, so I'll end it and share the results. And this one was way, way more one-sided. Um, nearly 80% of people decided to go with the um, with the lookup table, with a foreign key to the lookup table. So that is the winner here. I think um, there wasn't many reasons defending the check constraint. So if you do have a reason for choosing the check, check constraint, um, please share it with us. Okay, so let me, um, I'm gonna write this down as well before, um, before we move on. So we've got lookup, surrogate key and lookup. Okay, let's stop sharing that and move on to the next decision design point. And um, let, the next question we've got here is, we're gonna store the start time for each game. And the question here is, how are we actually going to store the time zone? Or how are we going to record what it is that particular time? And the basic choices here are, are we going to put everything in UTC? So um, here I've got just a timestamp, and they will implicitly be in UTC. So we've, we have to convert the values before inserting them. Or are we going to have a timestamp with time zone? And here when I'm saying the time zone, that will be the local time of the country the game is played in. So if for games played um, in England, the time zone will be Europe, London. If it's played in Berlin, it will be Europe, um, Berlin, or if it's played in Germany for India, it will be Asia, Kolkata, or one of the other um, cities there. As I said, for countries like the US that span multiple time zones, uh, just for simplicity in this case, I'm just picking a default one, which is Los Angeles, right? Um, so we've got some various cho choices there. So one, one last comment on the um, check versus lookup. A long time more statuses might appear. That's very true. There's always new requirements come along over time, right? And we can never, no matter how hard you think about it, there's always new things that pop up in it as time goes on. Okay, so I think most of the votes are in at this point with that one, but let's see some comments. No conversions with needed with timestamp with time zone. And yeah, I mean, yes and no. I mean, you will probably need some conversions because remember, we actually had a couple of different requirements. We wanted to view um, the time that games take play place in, a particular country. So if I want to view all of the UK's games, I want to see that time in my country. So we still got to do the conversion there. And for the four uh, games coming up over the next X days, over the next week, again, we will want to convert to a standard um, time zone so that, you know, whoever's viewing it, they know when it's going to take place in their country, right? So we do still need some time zone conversions and whichever of these we choose, it's just one might be a bit easier than the other potentially, right? Okay, all right, so we've got some comments then. 
easy for local people to talk local language than trying to convert to UTC. That's a good point. Yeah. So, you know, you understand what your time zone is. I know what the time being in Europe, London means. Um, someone in the US knows what, you know, um, well, hopefully knows what the Los Angeles time zone is, things like that. UTC is easier to deal with and a function for current time zone would make it simple. Oh, that's a good point there. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's always trade-offs here, right? Local time is usually bad as two times a year you have a problem. Well, that depends what you mean by have a problem. If you are storing the hour offset, because of course we've just had daylight savings, most of us, um, or many of us, um, have had experienced daylight savings in the past few weeks, clocks going backwards for me, right? Forwards if you live in the southern hemisphere. But if you store the time zone as Europe London, then the database still figures that out correctly for you. You don't need to, if I store it as zero, the hour zero or the hour plus one, yeah, we've got problems there, right? If we store the location rather than the hour or something. Why didn't you consider timestamp with local time zone? Um, because I wanted to have only two options. I think I could have added a third. It would just added too much complication. And I think splitting into these two choices um, makes things more stark, more clearer. Um, I could have done, but it was just to keep things simple, basically. Okay. It's easy to convert UTC or common time zone for display, but if we store only UTC, UTC we can never know the or compute local time zone if needed. But it depends, right? We know the home country, we know the location of each event, so we can convert to that. So again, it depends on your data and what you're trying to store here. Make UTC as universal, let the application convert. Okay, so, so this one was pretty close, actually. I think all the votes are in. Let's do that, share the results. And you can see it's a, it's a narrow win for timestamp with time zone. Lots of uh, differing opinions on this one. Yeah, there we go. So I'm writing that down. We've got timestamp with time zone as the winner on that one. Um, and someone from Insom might have some nice stuff about that. Okay. Um, if you've got some links you could share about that, that would be great because I can add them to the session after the events and we can let other people know about those. Okay. So we've got timestamp with time zone. So we've done that. And let's stop those and let's move on, move on to the next one. So next up. Um, so as we saw, each game, there are two countries that take part in each game, the home country and the away country. And the question here is how do we actually store those? How do we represent them? And there's two basic approaches here. And the next design decision is, do we use rows or do we use columns? So let's start the poll. This one might take a little bit more of explaining. Um, so I'll start with columns. That's probably the easier. So we've got our games table and we've got our row in there and we'll have two columns, a column called home country and a home column called away country um, and then so we'll have one row to store these as rows it'll be like a you know a master detail relationship we have our games table and a games country's child table where we've got the game id and then a column to say whether or not it's the home team or the away team and what that country is okay that's why i'm saying the different approach here um each team will have a separate row in this game countries table which is child of our games table um, to store the countries. We can use columns and store, you know, how to store each of those individually. Okay. Uh, okay. So thanks for sharing uh, that link um, about time zone. I'll I'll keep it. I'll add it to the office hours page after the session so that people can then access that and see that as well. Okay, so votes coming in. Um, no one's given any arguments about why they want or the, one or the other at this point. So um, I'm interested to see what people think here. Um, it's quite a, there's actually quite a clear winner in this case. So let's just I'll close that one off. Okay, we, I think we've got almost all the votes in. Um, we will look at data by game usually. That's a good one. So is that def in defense of columns you're saying? Because you want to see both the teams at the same time, you know, save as joining, that's a good point there. Um, always two exact choice, therefore columns. That's a very good point here. Um, with rows, the, the big advantage of rows and why you usually use it for master detail relationships is it allows you to store as many values as you want. The big disadvantage is if you have a fixed number of values, 
then um, it's very, very hard to enforce that in the database. We want to sure that, be sure there are exactly two teams take part in each game. We can do that super easily with columns. And you'll notice I haven't actually talked about what the sport is here. As all team games, as far as I'm aware, always have two teams in them. And notionally, one of those is assigned to be the home team, even if it's at a neutral venue. Um, I'm sure someone in the comments will kind of think of some description, some game that does have three or more teams in them. Um, but I can't think of one, right? Now, notice these aren't races. Things like um, cycling, motorsport, they do have multiple teams in them in a single event. But I consider those to be races, not games. Games, we're talking about things like football, rugby, cricket, um, basketball, baseball, and so on. Every example I can think of always has exactly two teams in them. So, and therefore, columns, let me turn that. Okay, we look at data by game, we've covered that. Columns, because if you save means to, of storage, you don't need to repeat home and away things. That's a good point here. We need an extra, extra data item to say which team is which, right? Uh, something I hadn't thought about. Columns is far easier to query. We'll see. We'll see about that, right? Yes. <laughs> okay. I think you my guns. Since there is only one home team and one away team, the row system is not needed. If we had a variable amount of teams playing, then each game, then row would be better. Yeah, it, exactly. Great point. You know, that's what I was saying a second ago. Might depend on whether the application activities are more team focused or game focused. Now, that's, that's a very good point there. And you'll notice with the requirements, I had a bit of a mix of both, right? We, I wanted to see all the games for a particular team. I wanted to see the all the upcoming games. And I wanted to see that, so that's one of those is team-based, one of those is game-based. And I want to see the league as well, which is team-based or country-based. So it's interesting to think, what, what's the end requirements here? What are people doing, right? Um, so you might want to think a bit about that as well when signing this. I would put columns instead of rows. Upon some circumstances, it's only one fetch. Yeah, so less time. Yeah. So I think um, I think that's a good point, Seth. So I think well, everyone who's votes who's going to vote is going has voted at this point. I'm sure. So let's share those results. And you know, say it's pretty clear winner for columns in this case. So let's say columns are the winner. Now we'll put that down. So that's our winner there. That's our next choice. I will stop sharing that. So nearly nearly 80% of you went for columns. Let's stop sharing that. And let's move on to the next choice. So next thing here I'm gonna talk about is the team scores. Um, I'm gonna be careful here because I'm gonna use points again in a second. Um, these are the uh, points that teams accrue playing the game. So in football, that would be goals. In cricket, that would be runs. For rugby, that would be the points they get for things like tries, conversions, and so on. In basketball, that's throwing, you know, shooting baskets and things like that. So that's the, um, in each game, the value that increments as the team uh, scores whatever the equivalent of goal is in that game. Okay. Um, so there's the interesting question here is, what do we store for games that have not yet been played? So the scheduled matches, right? Obviously for complete games, we know what the results are, we're gonna store those. But for a game that has not yet been played, do we leave that empty or do we have a default of zero? Okay, so let's start that poll off there. So what this means is when we insert a game and it's scheduled, we will leave those scores empty. We will record those as null, all right? That's what null means here. With default of zero, when we insert a scheduled game, we're gonna make it a default of zero that is not nullable. So that means that the score for each team, every team in each game will default to zero. So we're gonna have no nulls in the score columns. And um, for games that are not yet played, the value will be zero. No, okay, so there's quite comments coming in. Zero is an actual score, but null means there is no score yet. It's a very, very good point, right? Interesting distinction, yeah? If we put zero, then um, how do we tell the difference between something that is going to happen and something that has happened? Great point there, okay. Null differentiates something that has not yet happened, whereas zero indicates something that has, has happened that what is achieved. Yeah, it's a similar point to what we were just making. I would put null since zero is a legitimate value for score. This is an interesting point, right? 
by making it a default zero, it's kind of a magic value, but it's also a real value, right? Because um, I certainly wouldn't put minus one in there because that can cause as many problems as null can cause, but it's it's not yet applying, right? So it's kind of magic until the game has actually taken place. So yeah, it's what do we want to put here? How do you handle games in progress? Very good question there. We haven't, haven't talked about that yet. Um, so score increasing over time as till the games end. I mean, arguably we could start adding them. Maybe we might have a game status in progress, right? Already we've got a new requirement that I didn't really cover when we were talking about how we're we going to store those game statuses. How do we record something in progress? Are we going to record it in progress? Mm, interesting question, right? Um, so answer zero because I don't like nulls. I would create a one-to-one -one table that would not have it any entry for a game that has not yet happened. Ooh, that's a really good point there, right? So you're saying you're gonna go for a completely different choice here. Rather than this, we'll store the scores in a completely separate table. Ah, that's, uh, that's a great, uh, very uh, savvy answer there. I like that one, okay, there we go. Um, our scores for each team in our design. Yes, so whether we store as rows or columns, if it's rows, uh, well, we went for columns. So on our games, we're gonna have an away score and a home score columns on each thing, right? Um, why do you store the game score? It's the score for each team, right? Each team has a separate score. It's not the over, there isn't an overall score. I'm sorry if that wasn't clear. So we're gonna have the score for the home team, the score for the away team. Because we've decided to go with columns, we will have those two columns in the games table, right? So sorry if that wasn't clear. Shouldn't score by two numbers actually represent both teams' score? Not quite sure. Maybe that's the point I was just making there, right? Okay. Um, in the table, do we have a column for team? Else, what does score represent? Like, say, we have the games table. We decided we're going to have a home team and an away team, or home country, away country. We're going to have a home score and a away score on the games table. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, um, uh, maybe the slide miss <laughs> caught you out a bit here. Yeah, maybe that's what it didn't explain. Do we need to record individual scores? A goal for team A by player X at 12, 15, 23. Very good question. Um, that's out of scope for now. We might have to worry about that sometime in the future, but right now we're just gonna record the total. We don't need to worry about the um, match level statistics, right? Who scored what, that kind of thing. So for now, no, but maybe in the future, right? If you use zeros, you won't be able to tell the difference between a game when both teams and an unplayed game. Yes, a few people have said that. I like that. Out of scope, simple equals better. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'll notice um, there are some other decisions. We've covered a lot of things, but there are other decisions that we need, we'll need to make at some point, right? Um, and there's other things I haven't even talked about, right? And already you can see there's a lot, super simple schema. There's a lot of things, a lot of possible choices here. Okay, so we've gone, let's um, end this poll and share the results. And I think this is the clearest winner so far. So we've gone for null. And I think most people kind of felt that having um, null made it easy to distinguish between a genuine, what teams have actually scored, you know, unplayed games and games in progress slash completed. Um, how Oracle store null and zero. So zero is an integer value, which, you know, has the in internal representation, whatever that is. And null is actually, um, it, it consumes no space in Oracle database. You know, if there's, we might have a single byte to indicate it is null, if there's columns after it to show that it is null. But um, I mean, that's getting a bit too deep or deeper than I need to go at the moment. So we've gone for null, null, all right. All right, final, final decision, and then we can actually like, get on and start making our schema. This is taking a bit. Um, so good. Yeah, let's stop sharing that, move on to the final one. So you notice I was being very, trying to be careful about score versus points. So here, when I say team points, what I mean is after the result, we each team has a score. I'll use football as an example, because it's one of the simplest. Each team will have a number of goals. And then the team who scored the most goals is the winner. And they will get in, in football, we have the standard of like three points, um, one point for a draw or zero. So points are after the game is completed, how do we assign the points for the league for the win, draw, draw, loss, right? 
And there's two kind of basic ways we could do this. We could store it or we could calculate it. So when we're storing it, um, and again, we've got our two column to home and away teams. So home and away countries. So we're going to have a home points and an away points column. Okay. So there'll be going to be a column for each of those teams storing what they scored, or we can always calculate it. When calculation means whenever we need to know this, we'll figure out who's won. And then I would say, we're going to use the standard football system, three points for a win, one point for a draw, zero points for a loss. Um, I know there are various other ones out here just to keep it simple and um, not get too bogged down. We're just going to, um, we're going to stick with that. So do we store or calculate the result here? Oh, this is an interesting one. Oh, this is getting, this is really close actually. Um, Function-based column provides the best of both. Ah, oh, there we go. Glad someone said that. Yeah, so a virtual column where we can calculate it. That's a great point there. Okay. Um, we have enough data so this can be calculated. We might also store incorrect result here based on the result. Um, so always calculate derived info. Yeah, it's the interesting thing here. If we store it, what, what happens if we store the wrong value? How do we know? Um, can be quite hard to spot. Calculate. Rules can change. In the old days, football gave two and win points. Yeah, that's, that's quite a long time ago now, wasn't it? That's a, it's been a long time since that happened. But it, it is a good point, right? You know, these could change. They might decide four for a win at some point. Other games might have different scoring system or points allocation systems. You know, if we want to generalize this to any type of team event, we'll have to think about that, right? So what do we do? Store, sometimes score systems change and then past entries would be hard to calculate. Ah, so one person said calculate because they might change and the other said store because they might change. Interesting, right? Ah, same, <laughs> um, different conclusion for the same argument. There we go. Store but add a column for games played so that store value can be compared across teams with different numbers of games played. Okay, it's an interesting point there. I'm, um, I'm not quite sure I'm following I, exactly what you're saying, but um, yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that maybe in height. Okay. We want to store the results for a longer period during which rules might change, then storing the result is also an option. Otherwise, we may use a virtual column, right? Okay. All right. Final one, then we'll move on. Okay. Stored data can easily access, calculate, require CPU usage every time you read it. I mean, yeah, but I mean, the CPU to do this calculation is going to be pretty trivial. If you're worrying about that, either you've got the best tuned system in the world or you're wasting your time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Let's show that and share. And this one, super, super close. Calculation, just edging it ever so slightly. 51% calculate. All right. So calculate. And let's do that. So that's going to be the hit. Um, on the cloud for autonomous database, how choice store or processing data um i'm not sure what the question is i don't think autonomous database really makes any difference to this decision because it's things like um how do we sure the data stays consistent what if the point allocation changes over time those are business problems not technical problems right so i'm not sure autonomous changes anything here but if you can elaborate that might help here yeah. all right then so all right. Okay. Phew. We've gone through all that. Let me write down calculate. Right. Gone through all those. Thanks for all that. I hope you. I hope you enjoyed. It. I thought that was fun. I hope you enjoyed it too. So at this point, we've made our decisions. We're going to go ahead and build the schema. Now this is this is where I find out how well this has all worked. So I've tried to build a script to try and um, incorporate all the possible combinations here. So it's fairly easy to actually do okay so i am running this on autonomous database so my always free cloud um autonomous database if you're interested and you can see there's a whole bunch of stuff commented in and out um i'm gonna change this based on what we decided all right so to recap we said we're gonna have surrogate keys a lookup table timestamp with time zone um we're gonna have columns home and away columns we're gonna have null for the score and we're going to calculate this points. Okay, so let's do this. I hope this works. All right, um, I don't know whether or not it will. So, so we can see, let's come in there. So we've got our surrogate key here. Notice we still need this unique constraint on the ISO code. I don't want to store two countries with the ISO code GB, UK, United Kingdom, 
because that will cause us all sorts of problems. So we still need this unique constraint here. Okay, so let's create that. And um, the nice thing here is with these inserts, because it's a default identity, the actual inserts stay the same whether we had a surrogate or a um, natural key. So let's just commit that. All right then, and we were gonna have a lookup table. So I'll need to comment that in. I will create these game statuses and the ones that we had. So we've got those in there. Right, this is where it's gonna get a bit more interesting. Um, you might need to help me out a bit here, make sure it's got it right. So we we're gonna have timestamp with time zone. That was right. So I'll put that back in. So we've got timestamp with time zone. I'm gonna put our lookup table in, remove the check constraint. We're gonna have home and away countries and scores. They were going to be null, so I can delete all this nonsense, delete all that. We were not going to store the points. I noticed points also had this null versus default zero decision as well, right? That was something that we might need to think about. Um, so let's just remove those. And of course, we don't want all the games have to be between two different teams, two different countries. We don't want a country to be able to schedule a game, a country playing itself. We're gonna have a check constraint to make sure that those are different. So let's create that table. All right, if we had had rows, we would have to do something like this. Notice check constraint to say whether or not it's home or away. Um, so I've put those in there, the score and the points. Um, unique constraints, so we can't schedule a game, um, the same country to play the same game um, twice, you know, against itself and that there are no other possible values, but we can remove that for now, right? This is just a simple little thing I've got so I can convert the um, country codes to whatever our surrogate keys are nice and easily. All right, so we're gonna have use columns, this is true. We don't need to worry about store points, that was false, and use UTC, we're gonna have time zone, so that is false. Hopefully this works. Um, don't need to worry about too much about that, but we've got some past games and some scheduled games. Um, we're not having rows, so we don't need to insert all those as well. And we are not storing the points. So notice I had some rather funky looking updates here to um, set the points as well, if necessary. Um, so notice we were going to calculate them. We would have just stored these on insert um, or when the game completed or updated when the game completed in reality. So I'm not going to talk about these in detail because uh, I mean, you've got more, more important stuff to cover, right? Um, let's just set the timestamps. So we've got our countries table. Let's just check. We've got our surrogate key on that. Good. We've got our games and we had a lookup table um, and we've stored them timestamp with time zone. So I've set them all, scheduled them all to take place at 3 p.m. local time. So that is whichever the time zone is. I've decided the home time zone is for that country. Like I say, USA does have multiple time zones, so I've just picked one just to keep things kind of simple for this. Um, in football, there is no GB. All the UK countries are included. Oh, yeah, you, you're good. I mean, you know, uh, that's true. It's usually true, right? Um, not always true, but maybe we a different sport. Okay. Um, <laughs> interesting thing to talk about there, right? Should we separate those? The code, I'm going to do my best to share it later. Okay. All right. So let's do this. So we got that. We've got our home. We've got, we haven't got the points. Notice we've got null for the scores. So the unplayed games, we don't, we're not going to accidentally figure out, you know, calculate these as draws or something when we try and assign points. And we don't have a game countries table because we didn't need it. Right. So hopefully that we had null, we had calculated with columns, right? So hopefully that's what we chose. And hopefully these things are going to work. Okay. So on to the queries. Um, okay. So first up, we want to see all the games for a particular team or a particular country. And we want to show the start time in that country's time zone, the time zone we picked, and the result, whether they won, drawn, or loss. Okay, so if we'd stored it as rows, you'll notice we had to join the game countries and then pivot the result in order to get, basically we want start time, home team, away team, and result if it applies, okay? So if we were doing rows, we'd have to be kind of a bit complicated, right? So let's just, let's just remove that, keep things simple. Um, okay, so I need to comment back these in. We've got this from time zone, 
add the UTC, ti UTC time zone to the timestamp. Exit timestamp with time zone in the time zone UTC. So we would, would have needed to do that. I don't need to do that. We have the time zone. We can just convert to whatever time zone we're looking for. Uh, we've got our home and away country. No, uh, this is where I need to be careful. We are using surrogate keys. So at this point, let me, let's just try this. You'll notice it's all super messy. I didn't remember what I'm doing. Notice we have to join to figure these things out. And let me check that I've got this right. Why is that? I see the problem is there. Okay, let's do that. And we need to, so um, to figure out what the country codes are. So we want to say time and then ISO code of the country. Um, hopefully, let's see if I got this right for Germany. Yeah, there we go. Um, so we can see the games they're going to play, um, and we know the home. We've got the home and away score. So if we notice that by adding surrogate keys, we've actually made things kind of a bit more complicated, right? So this is the start point. Um, let me. I'm just going to put this in a SQL macro just to simplify it. And notice I've got remove binds to remind myself to take out the bind from that. Um, because you don't have the binds in there. And then hopefully if we get game for Germany. There we go. We got those. And uh, we do it for India. Let's get India. We've got those. Good. Um, and we've got the US. And there we go. That's right. Right. Cool. That's good. So we need to calculate the result. Now, fortunately, the, one of the nice things about having, now we've got the home and away scores. So it's super easy to do. We can just calculate it like this, one drawn or lost. And we put that in for US, and I've done something wrong here. Okay, I knew this was gonna happen. All right, let's just check check, my, check this again. Let me run this query again. So I needed to, what, oh, I needed to comment that back in. There we go. Um, no, because we had surrogate keys, I needed to do this. I needed to put the ISO codes back in. I mean, we needed the ISO codes, the countries, there we go. So notice we had to, to get those country ISO codes, we had to do a bit of um, fiddling, right? If I just uncomment those and just use the values we had, one, two, three, four, well, what do those values mean? One of the advantages of using natural keys when they are, when they are generally pickable and workable is that you can you don't need as many joins generally, right? You can just infer something from the data itself. Um, okay, so let's hopefully this is the correct query now. Fingers crossed. Let's just put this back in here and remove that bind variable value. So we'll do that. We'll do that US. There we go. And then hopefully this works. There we go. Right. So we can see the US. It's lost all its games, and we've got Germany. The and they have they won and they draw right, and we got um, TBC. So does no goals mean null, or will it be nil nil post match or null null pre match? Right. So what we were saying was because until a game takes place, we're going to store null for the scores. Okay. Once a game is completed, we will store the actual scores that each team had. Um, we haven't fully decided what we're going to do when for games that are in progress, but we can assume, let's just say, as soon as a game starts, we'll set the road to be nil-nil or zero-zero, whatever, you know, the, whatever the starting score is for each team in each game. I think that's zero in pretty much all games, right? Um, and these are game, games that are yet to be played, um, so they have no score, and notice the result is TBC, okay? So... Uh, there was a bit of complexity there, right? All right. So it wasn't super complicated, um, but, you know, we talked about storing the points, but we didn't talk about storing the result as well. There's something else we could have potentially done. Calculate versus store the result, All right? Okay, let's move on. So hopefully that answered your question there, hopefully. Um, right, upcoming games. So this is where we want to be in the session time zone. So notice with these, it's always going to be in the time zone. Let's go to India, you know, so Asia or Kolkata, um, in the time zone for the country we are searching for, okay? So if you are living in India and you want to know what time the Germany-India game that takes place in Germany is, it's 7.30 p.m. Kolkata time, right? 
how about as it stands yeah in progress we haven't we're going to initialize things and as the game progresses well, that's a that's a question for another day right we've got enough to talk about we'll worry about that problem later the as it stands the live reporting let's let's gloss over that for now okay but it is an important discussion an important thing that you need to think about right Okay, so now we want to view the fixtures that are going to happen over the next seven days. So from tomorrow for the next seven days. Um, so we had timestamps. So with app local, what this does is it retrieves it in the session time zone. So we'll see what that means in a minute. So we can, oh no, that's the wrong one. Um, so notice actually, if we do this, because we've got columns here, We've almost, certainly if we'd use surrogate keys, we'd almost just have what we want already. It would be very little extra processing we needed to do. But uh, unfortunately, we do need to do that. So let's just remove that. So again, I'll put that in a macro. And we've got surrogate keys, so I have to join in the home and away countries. And hopefully this is right. There we go. And I've just um, I've hard coded the timestamps so I can build the scripts the other day, right? And make sure everything matched up. In the real world, we'll probably have like, you know, sys timestamp and to sys time plant stamp plus seven or something like that. Okay. So actually that query was super simple, right? It, it was a little bit complicated when we wanted to um, take our results for a team. You know, someone was saying, what is our queries here? Do we want team-based results? Or do we want game-based results? Well, we want both. So which is better? Hmm, you know, trade-off, right? There's not a clear necessarily winner. Okay, so we've got that. Um, and because we weren't in columns, it was pretty, pretty simple, although we had surrogate keys. So we had a couple of extra joins we needed to do there. And just kind of prove, I want to change these to Kolkata time. You'll see 7.30, 4.30 in the morning, lovely. Um, Berlin time. They're 3 p.m. and midnight. Okay, so we got those in local time. So someone was saying with time zone, time zone with time zone with time zone, you don't have to do conversion. Well, you still do sometimes, right? Depends what you're trying to display. Okay. Um, all right, let's generate the league, the really fun one. This is where it gets super complicated. So you see with rows, we had to, first, I was going to get the um, results for each team. Um, so we could just see the one loss draw and things like that. And their score difference, right? Their home versus away. And, okay, so we were calculating the points. Um, so we needed to calculate these rather than just have columns. And this should give us for each country the one drawn loss. So we can see one drawn loss, the points. Again, because we use surrogate keys, we don't know what do these IDs mean. I don't know, right? We'll have to join to find out what that is. And we've got the score difference. So let's take this and do, do, do. So, okay, let's put that again in a macro. So I need to do some things here. So that was giving us like the country summary. I still need to turn this into the league where we've got each country, columns for one drawn and lost, the count of those, their total points and their total score difference, right? So that's interesting. So we've got the country results. We're getting there. We've got one drawn lost. We need to pivot those. Ooh, this is getting messy, right? We need to do something like this. Um, so notice um, we've got a whole bunch of nulls here for the for games where teams, any team that has not won or not drawn or not lost, if you've not got a result, we have, in fact, got null here. So we still need a bit of null handling in um, whatever we do. And this would have applied even if we'd had a default of zero. Okay. So we'll put that again in a macro to keep it simple. And then let me, we had surrogate codes like that. So we're going to have a country name in this case. And we can see one drawn last. So Germany, the United Kingdom are the winners at the moment, USA at bottom, and India is drawing. Right. So oh, interesting thing about this is, um, Whichever way we did it, the query to generate the league was super gnarly, right? Super complicated. Whatever we did, we'd had a whole bunch of pivots and unpivots and so on and so forth. This one was actually marginally easier when we had the teams as rows. And um, when we had them as columns, then we had to unpivot the columns, to turn them into rows, get the result by team, right? Um, so, 
Yeah. Are we going to have the scripts? Yes. I, I will share the scripts. I'll attach them. I'll put them in live SQL. I'll figure out what the best way. I appreciate I rushed through this a bit quick. Um, so if you want to follow through, I'll share them later. All right, then. Any, um, so one of the interesting things here is that it doesn't matter which way around we did it. Um, columns all rows. Generating the league was tricky, right? It was not an easy query. Um, and one of the things is showing the league, the overall standings, is a super, super common requirement. We probably want to turn this into a materialized view or store the results somehow, you know, um, and we want to cache them. Do we want to run kind of gnarly query like this every single time? Probably not. We just want to get the results from the league table. Um, and that this applies however we've done things. All right, then. So we've oh, covered a lot of stuff. I appreciate that I whizzed through that uh, demo super quick. Um, like I say, I will share them, but I just wanted to recap some of the main points here. And finally, I've asked your opinion. I'll give my thoughts on these things. Um, and then we see if there's any last questions or comments before we wrap up. So to start off with, surrogate versus natural, one of the big debates here. As we saw, one of the big advantages, or well, the main reason you use a surrogate key is so you can update the business key. Things like email addresses. If you've got an accounts or a users table, if you make email address the primary key, people can't change their email address. Probably not great. But with a natural key, generally, you can get away with fewer joins because the values mean something in the columns, at least to some degree. My opinion, my opinion. If the natural key are standardized codes, so ISO country codes, ISO currency codes, um, airport codes, IR to co airport codes, so like um, LHR for Heathrow, that kind of thing, backed by an industry body widely used, I think you should use those as natural keys. And I've done this and I think it can work really well. Also, that could also apply to internal codes. We didn't actually have it in the demo, but you notice if we stored the teams as rows, we had the home and away teams. I had home and away as um, codes out or look up codes for the game statuses. You know, you're in full control of those. There's not going to be that many. You can add, particularly if you use a lookup table, you can add flags. I would consider that a standardized code. Um, vast majority of times you do want to use a surrogate, but personally, if you have got a internationally backed standardized code, I think you should use it. And internal codes, I think, are okay too. Check constraint and lookup table. All right, as we saw, uh, something I didn't quite have time to do. Lookup table is super easy, much easier to manage. And I say annotate the values, we can have extra columns to give more explanation about what the values mean. One of the big advantage of a check constraint is that, actually, no, I will do this super quick. I will go um, very quickly to the end. So if we add a check constraint to the table, um, one of the things we saw is because we add DML, we can add a new game status, abandoned, right? Or in progress, the one I didn't think of that people thought of uh, pretty much straight away, we could add new game statuses in there. Um, and that's super easy. So we can mark a game as abandoned. With a check constraint, um, the optimizer knows what the values are. So if we search for a non-existent value, like a junk value here, it can um, optimize that away. So notice this filter, null is not null. The interesting thing here is all these zeros, it literally never accesses the table because it's an impossible condition. Now, this is, this is a bit of a fringe benefit, in my opinion. There aren't that many cases where in a good and well-written application where you'll need this optimization, but it can be useful to have in some cases. So you, I think you almost always want to use a lookup table. The chance times when you wouldn't is when the values are very well fixed. If we'd gone for countries as rows, home and away, I can't see, you know, maybe we might want to have marking both as neutrals, if it's at a third party venue, there's going to be very few values possible here, right? So um, it's unusual that a check constraint would be the right thing for a list of values, okay? You almost always want to look up table, in my opinion, right? Um, rows versus columns. This is a one-to-many relationship, but it's a fixed one-to-many. We know exactly how many rows they're going to be. Typically with one to many, you know, orders to order items, invoice to one, invoice items, that kind of thing. It is almost always the right choice to have master detail rows. 
But when you know exactly how many values there are, I think columns can be the right approach. Um, again, I, sporting matches is one of the few examples. Um, back to airlines again. Each flight has a single um, takeoff and a single landing point, right? It's between two points. You know what the departure and destination is. Um, using rows does have generally means you can have fewer joins and in some cases you don't need to unpivot and uniqueness is easier. The big advantage of columns is if you know that you always want exactly n, it's far easier to guarantee it with columns. So two, three values, I would go with columns. Okay, um, UTC versus timestamp with time zone, right. UTC is kind of like, it just standardizes everything to that particular time. Um, whereas if you record the time zone, it's clearer. Now it is worth noting, you could actually combine both of these. You could normalize everything to UTC, but have a timestamp with time zone with the UTC component installed. Or as someone said, a, we can have a timestamp with local time zone, um, which normalizes everything to the database time zone. Hopefully that's UTC, right? We recommend you make that UTC. Um, I think the uh, using a timestamp with time zone is useful when the time zone is relevant data to... So we're scheduling football games or whatever sporting matches, where it takes place determines which time zone it takes place in, right? So the time zone is actually relevant to that information. I think in those cases, it is useful to store it. Other cases, all system times, so created date, inserted date, updated date, you should use as UTC. Um, again, this is my opinion. Um, so that's my thoughts on that. Um, null versus not yet applicable. So this is this is interesting. Null or unknown information could be missing. No, we haven't been given it yet, or it may not apply. You know, if we're recording um, football things about football games. We have the score, that's goals. It doesn't apply how many tries they scored. That's a rugby a concept, right? Um, and in this case, actually, I think both of these are kind of wrong. We will get this information at some point. Null, there's lots of is null handling complexity there. But importantly, as many people said, if we use default zero, it's super easy to mistake that for an actual real result for our scheduled games. And as, uh, my my opinion here is you should do something completely different. You should do neither and have a game results table, which you record uh, when the game starts or when it's in progress or whatever, and record the results in that at the time it happens. And then there might be other information, things like the match tendons, um, what exactly the time it started and finished, that kind of thing as well, because there's other not yet applicable information. Finally, store versus calculate. Um, Storing generally makes your queries much simpler. You're just accessing column. But the big um, advantage of calculating is the data, uh, it can get out of sync. You can record the wrong value. With calculating, you ensure you can write a function to ensure it's consistent. Um, so you don't have mistakes here. Again, as someone mentioned, use virtual columns here. I see there are some comments. Um, I'm just going to wrap up. We're pretty close to the hour, so I'll wrap up quickly and then kind of address those. So I think the thing here is um, it's important to think about what trade-offs you're making. Each of these things we discussed had its own merits. There were good reasons for either side of the debate. Um, some of them might be slightly better based on your use case, but it's important to think, what are we building this for? What are our requirements that we know now? And what trade-offs are we making? Um, and if you're thinking about this and you think that we're not making any trade-offs, you know, I contend you haven't thought about it hard enough. What are those trade-offs? What are you gaining by using natural keys versus surrogate keys and vice versa, right? Now, again, as we saw, super simple schema. Um, we had six decisions. So there were 64 possible schemas we could have ended up with here. Um, and there was other things I didn't talk about. Do we, for surrogate keys, do we use sequences or GUIDs? Uh, you know, all sorts of other decisions. I think that when working on projects or as a, as a company or as a team or on a particular project, I think you should come up with some de design principles. Document what people should do. We should use, when um, picking a, natural, a primary key for a table, we always use sur surrogates. Why? Because we might want to update them. 
is there an exception? This work, this is what it is. I think it's really important to document not just what your design principles are, but why you've done them and why people might want to consider doing something different, right? I think this gives people a bit of a framework. Notice I say design principles and not design rules. I think all of us kind of hate being dictated to, right? You must absolutely always use surrogate keys, no questions, you know, your design design is going to be rejected if you do anything different. Whereas a design principle, use surrogate keys unless these things apply, gives you a bit of wiggle room, a bit of nuance, a bit of ability to adapt to particular requirements here. Um, so, and I think again, if you don't have these at all, it can become a free for all, schemas can end up in a complete mess. One thing I would say about this is try and keep it short, right? These are not necessarily the most exciting things to read in the world. If you've got like a hundred page document here, no one's going to read it, right? No one's going to look at it. Try and keep it as short as possible so people can actually digest it and use it. Um, and also related to that, try and use tools to enforce these. So in Oracle Data Modeler, we have, we've got design rules, which you can use. You can load your schema in and see if it conforms to these. Um, so that you get automated reporting, are we actually hit, meeting the standards that we actually met, discussed and met here? Okay, so I think really important, you know, try and automate it, these as much as possible in some way. Some of these may not be possible or harder, but, you know, this way you're not kind of like forcing people to always read the documents. Like, read this some boring massive document and try and find which bit actually applies to you. Um, uh, all that's kind of left to say is I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, more importantly, I hope you learned something. I will say next month we were scheduled to be just the week before Christmas. I'm going to be taking some time off over the festive period. So I uh, hope, you know, wherever you are, whether you, whatever you celebrate, you're getting a nice um, time towards the end of this, to the, towards the end of 2022. Um, I've, so I'm not going to be having a session December would have been 20th or 21st. Next one will be in the new year. I really hope to be able to see you next year. Um, we can talk more about SQL and how to build good database applications. All right, cheerio. Thank you.